everyone! Welcome to another wonderful episode of Description Intervention. My name is Claire Morrow and my job is to travel around the world and help struggling artists, writers, designers, filmmakers, authors, realtors, and any other job you can think of to get better at their job by using their description skills. Today, I am traveling to Antarctica to visit author Cassandra Rowling with her latest struggle, Sensory Details. Hey Claire, I've been writing a book and I've really been struggling to use my use of sensory details in my writing. Do you think you could help? Why, of course I can! Let's take a look at your writing so far. The land was white and cold. Huh. Let me show you how to fix that. When using sensory impression to enhance your writing, you need to use the five senses. Sight, smell, sound, taste, and touch. Also, instead of using general modifiers like cold or white, you can use more descriptive words. So instead of saying the land was white and cold, you could say my hands burnt from the ice cold air surrounding the snow caked ground. The roaring wind smelt of ice cream fresh from the freezer. These sentences use all five senses to make the reader feel as if they are actually in Antarctica with you. You could also use similes or metaphors in this area. Wow, that was extremely helpful. Thank you. Now that we, we helped author Cassandra Rowling with her writing, we can move on to our next client. It's a news reporter from Chicago, Illinois. It's Mr. Roger Report. Hi Claire, great to see you. I desperately need your help. As a reporter, it's important that I get a lot of viewers. I want to, to spread the news, but people aren't watching. I think it has something to do with my detail selection. Okay, let's take a look at one of your old news segments to see what's going wrong. Welcome back, viewers. Today we're reporting on the spindly, waxen, bony kitten who crawled quickly into the bushy green old tree as his sharp white claws ripped dangerously into the brown bark of a tall, arching tree. I see your problem, Roger. Let me help. You are using too much detail in your reporting. This can cause the viewer to get confused and bored. Instead of using your long sentence, use handy-dandy detail selection to help you minimize the amount of descriptive words in your sentence. So you can report on the cat stuck in the tree by saying, The bony cat unlatched his sharp claws to crawl quickly up the bark into the towering tree. This keeps most of your wonderful descriptive words while highlighting the important parts of your sentence. You could also match your long descriptive sentences with short ones to make your writing flow. You can do all this while still keeping your specific verbs like unlatched and crawl. This makes your sentence more than amazing. Sweet, thank you Claire. Now we are traveling to see Polly Picasso. She is an art critic. She needs my help with keeping her writing in line. Let's go! I'm an art critique and I can't seem to give a good review. People are starting to lose respect for me as a critique because they, they say I'm all over the place. How do I fix this? Let's see one of your recent reviews. This piece of artwork has a lovely background of beautiful scenery. It has a worn down house in the center that is brand new and nice. The artist uses all ugly colors. These beautiful colors really catch the eye and feet of the viewers. Hmm, okay, let me see if I can help. Your sentence has a very confusing dominant impression. The reader cannot grasp exactly what you are trying to say. Dominant impression is a lot like the mood of your writing, so to create a positive mood about a painting, you need to use all positive descriptive words. Let's fix this sentence. Instead of using those contradicting words, change it to, this piece of artwork has a lovely background with beautiful scenery. It has a beautiful new cabin in the center. The colors in the painting really capture the audience's attention. The mood of this sentence is clear and your point is made. You want to make sure that you are creating an accurate ethical impression when writing. You don't want to mislead the reader. When using description, it is common for people to be selective or over descriptive. This could be misleading for a customer or reader. For example, a hotel website could say, our deluxe rooms are absolutely breathtaking, when in reality, their meaning of deluxe means that the room simply has a view of the pool. Oh, I see now. I need to stop jumping all over the place and really focus on the words that I want to use to portray how I feel about art. Thanks, Claire. Next, we are heading to Dublin, Ireland to spend some time with a guy who is applying for some jobs that he wants. Hi, I'm Adam. I'm currently applying for two jobs and I keep getting mixed up with what kind of description I should use with each job. I'm applying to be a bank appraiser and a realtor. Okay, if you are a bank appraiser, you must use objective details to do your job. If you are a realtor, you will use expressive details to do your job. A bank appraiser will give a factual, impartial, and unemotional account of the house he is appraising. A realtor will give a subjective, personal, and emotional view of the house he is trying to sell. For example, if you were to become a bank appraiser, you would say something like this. The sliding door of the house consists of rough, sawn boards nailed vertically. 
The crack between the boards are covered with equally rough backs. The silver steel roof is the most prominent feature. And, if you were to become a realtor, you would use language like this to do your job. The house is absolutely beautiful. The siding creates a rustic look that brings joy to your day, every day. The trim work around the windows is gorgeous. There is a lot of natural light that makes the house glow and delightfulness. These examples also tie in with vantage point. Being able to describe something from many points of view, or just one point of view, can be very helpful in your writing. Now can you keep the two jobs straight? Yes, this is very helpful. I think I know what to do now. Let's hop on over to our next client, Donna Design. She's an interior designer in London, and she doesn't quite know how to arrange her descriptions for her employees. Hi, I'm Donna, and I've been trying to, to design a living room for weeks. I've been explaining to my employees how to arrange their furniture, but they can't seem to get, get it right. What is the best way to describe the room to them so they can accurately arrange everything? Well, Donna, there are three different ways to organize your descriptive details. The first is spatial order. In this particular way, you describe from back to front, left to right, top to bottom, and so on. If you are describing a kitchen, for example, you can start at the entry and move counterclockwise throughout the room. The second way to order your descriptive details is progressive order. In this organizational pattern, you would start with explaining the best parts of the room and then move on to the lesser parts. This is used mostly to persuade, but you could use it in your situation as well. The final method of organization for descriptive details is chronological order. To describe a room to your employees in chronological order, you would say what you want in the order you think of it. I hope these tips are helpful. They are for sure. Thank you. Well, folks, that looks like it'll be all we have time for today. Wait, 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 wait. Hi, Claire. Freddy here. I'm a huge fan. I was wondering if you'd answer a question for me. Um, I suppose we have time for one more question. Well, it'd be awesome if you could tell me some good strategies for writing description. Like, what are the steps I need to be a good descriptive writer? Um, I may have a video that will explain this perfectly. Let's look. Awesome. Yo, it's Claire. Here with a sick tune about writing description without sounding like a goon. You're gonna want to take some steps to make sure it is right. Otherwise, your writing will be really bad. Number one, select yourself a topic. A place you can describe like the tropics. Number two. Establish a dominant impression using feelings, reactions, or e emotions. Number three, drafting is a step that is adored. Be descriptive, but do not go overboard. Number four, the final step is revising. Fix up your draft to make the words sing. Those are all the steps that you will need to put your descriptive writing in the lead word. Oh, that was awesome, dude. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll see you next time on Description Intervention.